Hello again and welcome to class. This video is part of the audiogram of the day series where I complete a new random audiogram using the class simulation program and post it for you all to watch. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe to support the channel. So I'll go ahead and check random and then we'll start practice. This makes a new audiogram that I can't see. I have no idea what it is. And uh, again, I could cheat and show it overlay, but I'll, I'll do that at the end for the grand reveal. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I don't know if there's a better hearing ear, so I'll just uh, go down by 10 and then up by 5 until I get a response. Confirm that response. On our way in the right ear. The program requires testing at 3 and 6K, so that's what I'm doing. I, I say require. It doesn't always require it. You can toggle that off in the settings if you uh, don't like that. And up five, get a confirmation. And up five. Kind of a zigzag going on here. We can go back and retest 1000 just to be sure. There we go. Some people teach that you should retest 1000 just to kind of spot check yourself as you go, but some people don't. And there's my kind of odd looking right ear. Let's see what's going on on the left. When I'm testing adjacent frequencies, I usually just go up by a little bit to, to see if it'll be audible. And like in this case, it didn't even work because there's looks like there's some sloping loss here. But uh, usually I just go up by a, a little bit so I don't start at 50 every single time. Um, just a little way to save time when you're checking all your thresholds. This is kind of an interesting one. It looks like there's like a noise notch in the left ear. The right ear looks like this kind of flat odd loss. I'll have to check for masking when I'm done here with all the air conduction thresholds just to see if I've got it. Down 10, up 5. Okay, yeah, so this is where we're at right now. We've got our air conduction unmasked thresholds. It looks like we've got like a noise notch looking loss in the left ear and a flat, mild hearing loss in the right ear. Uh, let's just overlay them real quick. You know that you need to mask if the air conduction threshold in one ear is greater than the air conduction threshold in the non-test ear plus the interaural attenuation. I'm using TBH50 earphones and the interaural attenuation for this we're using is 40. So we've got 10, 20, 30. I think that's the biggest gap here. So I don't need to do any masking right now. That could change once I do the bone conduction testing. If the bone conduction thresholds are much better, that's really the metric that we should be using because if you're doing crossover hearing, that mechanism occurs through bone conduction. So if there is a need to mask, it will be because the signal here presented through the air conduction crossover and was heard by the bone conduction mechanism of the non-test ear. So let's go ahead and split this back out and do some bone conduction testing. We'll start in the in the left ear, actually, because that's our better hearing ear. Now we know that. So um, there's no need to start super high above the threshold because um, the air and bone conduction scores usually line up. And if they are different, <clears throat> then it's usually that the bone conduction is uh, better than the air, not, not worse. So I usually just do five above the air conduction threshold 
and then go down by 10 until I find the uh, true value. Bounce down 10, down 10. Oops, it was kind of tricky. And the bone conduction responses are super variable at really low and really high frequencies. So we usually only test at these uh, frequencies. So uh, now we'll switch ears and save the th same thresholds because we're assuming a zero dB interaural attenuation. And so this is what we would assume our response would look like on the right side. We see a very large difference here between the air and bone testing scores in the right ear. So we know that we're going to need to mask this right ear threshold. So let's go ahead and turn masking on. We'll set the masker level to the non-test ear air conduction threshold plus a 10 dB safety factor plus the occlusion effect, which for these headphones is going to be 20 dB at 500 hertz. And then we'll present and there's no response. So then we raise the level of the stimulus. And we do this plateau approach until we find the level where we increase the masker, but the stimulus or the, the audibility of the stimulus doesn't change. We'll start at the non test year of uh, the air conduction threshold with the non test year up by 10 safety factor and 10 dB of occlusion effect at 1000 hertz. And then we just uh, do the little dance until we find the level. Okay, there we go. So, starting presentation level, there's no occlusion effect so at uh, higher frequencies. So we're just going to add in our safety value. And then we'll go back and forth until we find the level where the stimulus is like that. And here, the, this gap here is only uh, 5 dB. So uh, we're going to call that good and say that we don't really need to mask that one because it's uh, within tolerable limits. So I think I'm done. I think I did it. That was a pretty fast one. Let's check and see where I'm at. Uh, we'll show the true audiogram. And it looks like there's no differences between the true. There you go. I crushed it. If you have any questions about what I did or if you would have done something differently, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. See you next time.